One of the things that I miss from the old analog days of note-taking is the tactility of a physical note. If your use case back then was more like having separate notebooks for maybe separate subjects, then an app like Obsidian probably works pretty well for you today. Because in Obsidian, every note is saved as a separate file, so you can open that file on its own or you can open multiple notes at a time by dragging them to the right and creating a new tab group. You can also use the stack tabs feature to kind of open all of your notes and browse through them like a book. However, if you were the kind of analog note taker that wanted to have different sticky notes and then a page from your notebook and an image from an old library book all open on the same table to be rearranged and interconnected in some sort of creative masterpiece, then Obsidian can't really do that. Until now, that is. The Obsidian developers just released version 1.1.0 to insiders and alpha testers. That means that it's not quite open for the public yet, but it usually only takes a few weeks before these features trickle down to the public release. So you just have to wait a little bit longer. And I'm going to update the first comment down below to let you know when it's publicly available. If you're an insider or you're looking at this video after the release has been made public, then you can go into settings here, make sure that your current version is 1.1.0 or turn on automatic updates and consider turning on receive insider builds if you are an insider. And this should be just done automatically. Otherwise, if this is a different version, then you can click on check for updates and you'll see whether your app is up to date or not. Once you do that, you can go to core plugins and you should be able to see this new Canvas core plugin, which is the biggest feature in version 1.1.0. Make sure that that is enabled and then exit out of the settings. Now let's create our very first Canvas. To do that, we're going to hit Command P or Control P to open up the command pane and then type Canvas. And there's now a new command in it called create new canvas, which you can of course assign a hotkey to as well. Otherwise, just click on it from here. It'll ask you for a note title. So I'm going to call this demo canvas and hit save. Now you'll see it opens up what looks like a note, but it's like in this gridded format. And that's to just make it a little bit easier to align notes on this grid but we don't have any notes here right now. So let's take care of that by right clicking and then clicking on add note from vault. Now let's say I want the principle of atomicity here. This is a note that already exists. So now it shows up here as a note, but it's only part of the screen. If I want to edit it, I can click on it. Double clicking enables editing of the note itself. So then I can type something here like I normally would. And then I can create links from this note to any other note, just as if I were editing this note. I can also set the color here. So let's say I want this to be purple. Now the outline and the background is this purple color, just to make it a little bit more distinguishable from other notes. If I didn't want to right click, I could have actually just gone down here and you'll see I have the same three options, drag to add note from vault, add media from vault and add card. So if I click on this and I drag it over here, then I can choose something else. Now this is the Zettelkasten. Now, because I put the note here, it's bleeding over to the side of the page. So we can then use zoom controls to zoom out here or zoom in, or you can also hold down command and use a mouse wheel, or you can do control and the mouse wheel on Windows and Linux. I can also move this note really pretty much everywhere. Now, if I want to move to something that's off of the screen, I can use my trackpad. So right now I'm using a magic trackpad. So it's a little easier for me to move around, but if I don't have that, so I can just hold down space and then click and drag to move to wherever I want to. What if I want to say that these two are related? Well, there's this little pink node here that comes up when I hover over the side of one of the notes, and then I can just attach it to any one of these four nodes of this other note. It makes more sense to put it here. Now these two are connected. And if I move this, the arrow changes with it as well. 
So that's adding a full note, each of which I can color separately. Let's say that this is a yellow one. It's nice and different from that one. Then again, I can also scroll down here or make changes if I need to. But what if I want to add a picture now, not the entire note? I'm going to go over here and drag this thing to add media to the vault. I'm going to look for an asset. Let's call it the thumbnail for one of my videos. It's a little bit big here. So let me move over to that. And then I can also resize it here. Now, what is it really connected to? It's connected to the Zettelkasten note. So again, I'm going to connect them like this. And then when I move it, the arrows move as well. Now let me zoom out a little bit. That is looking good. So now I have two notes and a thumbnail. So I know this thumbnail actually corresponded to a particular note. If I open that up, it's actually called how to make your notes visual and it has this video in it. What if I just want a part of it? Like this part where I'm talking about related videos and resources, maybe that's the part that I want in my canvas. So then I can drag another card here. I can just type in the title of that note and then I'll put a hashtag so that I can choose between the headings here. And what I was looking for was related videos and resources. That's the part that I want to add here. And let me zoom in a bit here. Now I have all of these links available in my canvas. Now, because this is related to this video, let me connect the two. And now I'm starting to develop quite a little network here of ideas that are all interconnected. But I know that I've made other videos on processing notes and maybe that's useful as well. So let me open up one of those notes. Here's one on how to process notes in Obsidian. And also here's an iframe that I put within this note that embeds the YouTube video. Maybe that's something that would be cool to put here. I'm going to drag to add another card here and I'm just typing command V to paste that in. And then it's a little small right now. So let me make it a bit bigger. Let me zoom in. And this is actually going to be playing the exact video. So I can play it right from this canvas, actually, if I want to. While that's playing, let me connect that to something else. And maybe it makes sense to connect it to this making a visual Zettelkasten again. It'll be connected to two things. Just move this around a bit, put that here, move this one over there. And it's spidering out quite nicely. Now, if I want to make this a little bit neater, I could enable grid snapping. And now instead of being able to put something within a grid, I'm only going to be able to align it exactly to these grids. And so that way I can better put these two together. Maybe I want these two to be the same height and it just helps to make it a little bit more uniform, but I kind of like this free form look to it. So I'll just leave that off. And the thing is, I don't just have to put things on here that are already in my notes. For good measure, let's put something that is like an Excaladraw drawing. And I'm going to double click on that. And that brings up the card automatically. So just double clicking on the canvas is like a, a different way to add a new card. And then I want to embed an Excaladraw drawing. Maybe I'll put this Excaladraw drawing here of my map of content. Let me rearrange it a little bit. There we go. Dashboards in Obsidian. And I'm going to link that to making a visual Zettelkasten as well, because this is a visual map of content. Now, so far I've only put in things that have already been part of my vault, but now I want to put in something that's just online. Zettelkasten.de was one of my original resources for learning about the Zettelkasten methodology. So let's say I want to add this into my canvas as well. I'm going to hit command C to copy that URL, go back to my canvas. I'm just going to click somewhere empty and then hit command V and it actually pasted it where my cursor was. So let me put it over there and kind of widen it a little bit so that I can see 
more of the site. Now let me put it on this side of the canvas so that I can more easily connect it to this list of resources. Now that's connected as well. Clicking into it will mean I can actually scroll through the web page. And if I want to continue reading, I can even navigate into the specific articles, which is pretty cool. So you might be wondering how this all shows up in your Obsidian Vault. A note is a markdown file, but a canvas file is actually a specific type of file extension dot canvas. So if we go back to our demo canvas here, I can right click on it and then click reveal in finder. And that way I can show you what that looks like. You see that it has the dot canvas extension. And when I open it up in a text editor, you'll see it's a JSON file. Now you don't need to know any of this if you don't care about how it's saved. Now, most people probably won't be interested in this, but I just wanted to show you the format because I know that some people like me are concerned about future proofing. So this isn't going to show up as a markdown file, and this is likely proprietary. However, I still like it because it is like an extra layer over the markdown files. It is still just kind of embedding different markdown files that I already have. And so I think that it is worthwhile just to have something that maybe is very Obsidian specific, but will let me pull in different Obsidian notes and kind of be like a working board, like a cork board where I can experiment and then maybe not even really keep the results. All of this feels very similar to another awesome note taking app called Scrintle, which I did test an early version of, and I ultimately decided that Obsidian was more my speed. But it is very similar in the sense that I can also visually rearrange notes and connect them and see them in this kind of infinite scrolling canvas. However, with the addition of Canvas now, Obsidian is that much more compelling over something like Scrintle because Scrintle still keeps your notes on the cloud and then those notes can be exported to Markdown, but Obsidian just saves to Markdown directly and saves locally by default, which is my preference. I think Obsidian solution is a really good compromise because now I have the convenience of having Markdown notes that are going to be future proofed and I still have the ability to arrange my notes visually if I want to. Now I can think of all sorts of use cases where this might be useful. Obviously anything with some sort of research where you're trying to piece things together and put things in context, or you're trying to map out your knowledge. Like I think in terms of mind mapping, this feature is really awesome. You don't even need to use your own notes. You can just add cards, which will be saved within the canvas file not within your Obsidian Vault. I think this could make a really good sort of dashboard if you want to have one canvas for a project and you could have all the people involved in the project, all the to-dos, all the project areas, the department heads or whatever you would like, maybe even a schedule or a calendar of some sort, that would work really well for it because you're bringing different types of information all in one view. I also think it has some interesting applications for role-playing games. You could have a hierarchy of people that are within the secret organization, or you could use Canvas to have a hex crawl where every note corresponds to a place, and then those places are linked together. So you know that when players go to one place, then you can have a bunch of options as to where they can go next. It's still early days for the Canvas Core plugin, which means that there are bound to be changes and there are bound to be significant changes before it gets released to the public. Typically, I want to wait until everybody has access to a feature before I talk about it, but I was just really excited about this one. So it's going to have to come with the caveat that this is the first initial release to insiders only. I think that this really shows how the Obsidian developers have been thinking in the last few releases. They've been improving Obsidian workflows and giving us new ways to work within Obsidian and arrange and visualize our notes. And I think it really shows that they're listening to what users like us really want. If you'd like to see the last release and all the awesome changes that came with that, then check out this video that I made on the version 1.0.0 release. Thank you for watching. Prater Sinterklaas Feest!